Good evening, everybody. Do you have lithium iron phosphate cells that you need to keep warm during the winter time because they're in an unconditioned space? Let me show you a little trick that I learned last year when I was using my 12 volt system out in my shop, which in Michigan here could drop down to, you know, single digits in the winter time. So lithium iron phosphate cells are not supposed to charge below freezing because you can damage them. And last year I had my 12 volt system all in my shop. And I thought that my first measure that I put in place to keep my cells warm was going to be enough, but it wasn't. And so I ended up having to take another step. And that second step actually worked really well. And it was really cheap. So the first thing that I did was... I had this old chest freezer, and this is where I ended up putting uh, my batteries for my solar setup. Doesn't matter if the freezer worked or not, because I didn't use it for an actual freezer. It was just an insulated box. So I built a little shelf across the bottom, and I set my first pack on there, and then I built another shelf up above, and I had my second uh, pack sitting on top of it. And it, it worked fine until it got to those really, really cold days, and then... One day, my system would not turn on the next morning. And when I looked at the VRM, it turns out that I had a uh, low temperature charging protection. And so I was trying to figure out, all right, what can I do? I mean, this is already an insulated box. So what can I do to keep the contents inside warmer? So one option was to you know, put a heat lamp in there. And, you know, while that works, you know, this is this is really bulky. There wasn't a whole lot of space on the inside. And these things, I mean, this bulb right here, 250 watts. For that small of a space, it would just heat it up ridiculously fast. But I wanted to kind of play off of that concept of the lamp, but I didn't want it turned on all the time, wasting power. And that's when I came across one of these. It is a thermostat controlled outlet. A programmable thermostat controlled outlet. I mean, really, you can use these for, you know, heaters. You can use them for air conditioners, whatever. But uh, I think we just picked this one up from, I don't know, Menards, Home Depot. It was not that expensive. But I had one issue. Um, in my particular instance, power was right there, and the freezer was right there, and that's the temperature probe on this outlet. So I ended up opening, opening up this thing and soldering on my own cables to extend... Oh, I don't know, about five foot of wire onto this temperature probe. Now, depending on your system, you probably could just plug in one of those thermostats directly into your inverter inside, if you have your inverter inside the cooler, but mine wasn't. This this cooler right here only had my batteries in it. I mean, it's, it's not a very big cooler. Um, it... it really wouldn't have fit much more in it. And if I had the inverter in there, that actually might help warm it up just from the, the fans kicking on from that. But it was batteries only. And the outlet that you see right here where I had the thermostat plugged in, that was on grid power. Uh, at the time, we really didn't have the inverter running all the time. It was only running the barn out here. And so we had a uh, little remote that we put by the lights to the barn. So we always knew when we walked into the barn, if we needed lights, we'd press the switch, it would turn the inverter on, and then we could flip a switch and then the lights would come on. And that's how we ran it. But I needed to get the heat down into here. And I needed to figure out a way to monitor the temperature down into here. I extended the, the, the thermostat probe, like I said, to about five feet. Plenty of room for me to run the wire down into this freezer. 
And if you see right here, I actually had notched uh, this gasket out. That's where I had my battery cables going out. And I had the thermostat drape running down low because I wanted to know what, what the temperature was near the bottom because heat rises and so I needed I needed the cooler temperature and so I had the thermostat figured out and I had to figure out a light and we had I'll close the lid for a second we had this switch controlled light that we had used for a long time as a temporary light over our kitchen sink because we didn't have a light over the sink and so I ended up grabbing this and I put a 40 watt light bulb on it and I put this down inside all the way down underneath so it would be underneath all the batteries heating everything up so we had the, the bulb down underneath, and then we had the power cord coming all the way up to here. And I had programmed uh, this thermostat, I want to say it was like 40 degrees was the minimum, and it would go until it increased uh, 50 up 10 degrees, and it would turn off at 50 degrees. And it's got a little switch on the side to turn it on and turn it off. So actually right now in my shop, it is currently 40 degrees and it's set to 65. So if I turn this switch on, the light bulb comes on in the freezer. And so remember, 40 watt light bulb. And actually it would probably warm up a little bit faster uh, having the actual cells in this freezer, but I've already moved everything into the house probably six, eight months ago, but you know, being winter time, I've seen people talk about keeping packs and batteries warm. And so I wanted to just kind of share my little cheat that I figured out that really didn't cost that much. So we'd have the light bulb going and we just closed the lid. So we're at 5.36 a.m. Well, the clock is wrong, but it says 5.36 it's on run and it's already up to 42 so we'll set it to 50 and we'll see how long it takes for it to get up to up to temp So that's not bad, getting it up 10 degrees in under 10 minutes. Not too bad at all. And now the box is, you know, warm to your hands. The light's all turned off. Nice, nice, simple little way to heat up your battery box. And honestly, this will work if your battery box is, you know, an insulated plywood box, uh, a chest freezer like what I've got here. I've seen, is it, uh, Ben from Ben's Solar and Battery, I think. He actually converted an entire fridge freezer uh, for his battery storage in his garage, I believe. So he drilled some holes through the side and, and through the uh, refrigerator section up into the freezer section. And he's got, in all the shelves, he's got stacks of batteries in there. Uh, and that would work great uh, for Something like that. You put your, your light bulb on the bottom shelf of the fridge and set your thermostat. Now, that thermostat right there, it's, it's, 
you know, if you don't know how to solder, it could be a little annoying. You can actually buy on Amazon, they've got thermostats with longer probes um, that'll allow you to set the uh, the main unit, like that, that white piece right there, the main unit sets, can sit outside of something and then you can just drop your temperature probe on the inside. They're, they're a lot nicer and kind of more designed for, uh, kind of this application as opposed to something like this, which is more designed for like room temperature and, and detecting that. I just modified it. But I mean, 20 bucks maybe for, uh, thermostatically controlled outlet and I had a 40 watt light bulb 40 watt incandescent light bulb heat in the whole box and it worked great I didn't waste any extra power a 40 watt light bulb for 10 minutes that's nothing power wise um yeah you could do the heat mats if you want to those will heat up the cells as opposed to heating up the space that the cells are contained in and if that works for, for your specific layout, great. Uh, but I just thought I'd share, you know, my little heated battery box hack, I guess. Uh, it, it worked out well. Um, and honestly, you can find fridges and freezers. I mean, shoot where I live. You could almost find them on the side of the road when you're driving down the street. Somebody's got one. Uh, when you're driving into town, there's, there's going to be at least one or two on the road. Actually, I just heard the thermostat click back on, so it it's it had dropped down to 47, so it's a three degree swing. So it'll uh, when it drops both three degrees below where you have it set, it turns on, and when it gets three degrees above, it'll turn off. So again, just thought I'd share. You could probably find a a bad chest freezer or an old fridge on Facebook Marketplace and convert it for your battery storage needs. And it would work great because it's already insulated. And people are, they want to get rid of them. Just a, just a thought, just a tip. Thought I'd share. All right. If you can't see my breath from uh, this video, <laughs> the shop is probably about 40 degrees right now, or maybe even less. I had the heater running before I got in here, but it's, it's dropped back down. And we've got uh, sleet going on outside right now. So I'm going to go finish taking care of chores. Y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later.